Welcome to today's class. Today we'll be talking about the measure of central tendency and dispersion. My name is uh, John Wadamuma. I'm from the School of Veterinary Medicine at UNSA Department of Disease Control. So by the end of this lesson, uh, you should be able to describe the measures of central tendency and variation, and also be able to calculate the mean, median, and mode and calculate the range, standard deviation, and variance. You know, decision making is an important aspect of our lives. Every day, we are making a decision. We make decisions normally based on the information we have. Of course, also on the attitudes and the values that we have. So statistics uh, provides us with such means uh, for information uh, making, uh, decision making. Uh, statistics provide us with uh, a set of tools that we could use to evaluate uh, data, uh, observations, and then so that we uh, can make decisions. So it provides us with a means of uh, examining, uh, examining what we are observing or information and so that we can make uh, a good decision. Moreover, statistics can be used for making decisions when we, faced, when we are faced with uncertainties. There are certain times when you are faced with uncertainties and you are not sure uh, which, or which one is the best option to take. And so statistics uh, is uh, a useful tool uh, when it comes to uh, uh, decision making. When it comes to summarizing data or if you want to describe the distribution uh, of a given uh, data set, Normally, there are two parameters that we use to describe uh, a particular uh, population of data or uh, a, a distribution of data. And these are the measures of central tendency and the measures of variability or dispersion. Let's look at the measures of central tendency. A data set uh, consisting of observation for some variable is referred as raw data or ungrouped data. So when you have data uh, which has got the observation, let's say for instance say uh, you were doing a survey and you went to farms to look at the, the types of breeds that are on the farm. So you go to a farm and then you collect, you, you observe the different types of breeds in different heads. So what you have, all that you, you have written on your, on, your, on your sheet, data collection sheet, uh, that is raw data. But then you can also now organize this data and present it in a, a frequency distribution uh, or called group data. So this is now where you, you, you group them, for instance, to see, okay, how many uh, animals are Frisian, how many are Angoni, how many are Tonga breeds. So you group them so that you have some bit of frequencies where you are able to uh, estimate or count the number of animals you know, in a particular breed. So that is now you are putting them into uh, distribution frequencies. So the measure of central tendency uh, it will be discussed here. Uh, it can be, uh, can be done on, on, on grouped or ungrouped data. Uh, both forms uh, of data you know, uh, we can use to, to measure uh, uh, the measure of central tendency. So if you look at this uh, graph, this is a, 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 a normal distribution. Uh, as you know, the normal distribution as a, uh, uh, as a symmetrical distribution. Uh, so the mean is in the middle, uh, in the middle of this uh, 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 graph. Uh, uh, so the mean uh, is, a cent is, a, is, a, is, a, is a measure of central tendency when it comes to a normal uh, distribution. It represents, you know, it's a representative number or at least the central number that represents uh, uh, the other uh, observations in the, in the distribution. Uh, this is uh, uh, also uh, a distribution uh, of data set. Uh, you, we, here we're looking at uh, uh, the, uh, the number of frequency, uh, the frequency, uh, the rate at which this particular uh, uh, elements uh, have been observed. So if you look at, for instance, um, uh, the first column where we have got 20, 
Uh, so 20, uh, which means this particular observ observation has been observed uh, about uh, uh, three times. So this is uh, just to, to give, give you, have an idea of uh, what I've been talking about, about data and the frequency distribution. For, uh, says, for instance, that the, this is stood for, 20 stood for, uh, 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 like let's say that in this column where 20 is, is a particular breed. So this then would be the number of, of it would present the number of breeds that are in this particular uh, 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 category and like what the number of animals which are in the, a particular category like that. So uh, when it comes to measuring uh, central tendency, uh, basically there are three uh, most widely uh, measures of central tendency. That is the mean, the median, and the mode. These measures are defined for both samples and populations. So uh, we use normally the mean, the median, and the mode. So the mean or the arithmetic average of a set of number is computed by adding the values uh, in the data set and dividing it by the, uh, the number of observation. So if say for instance you, have, uh, you, are, you are collecting the weights of uh, persons, so you have 20 persons in, a, in, your, in your sample size, so what you do is that if the first one was uh, weighing uh, uh, 50 kg, the other one 67, the other 70, 90, so you add all those observations and you have a total. And then once you have a total, then you divide that total uh, by the number of uh, observations that you have made or the number of people that you have weighed, and then you get them in. So uh, the question is that uh, if you have a, 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 a sample, a sample, and then a, or a, a population, and you know uh, you know the n, then you can calculate uh, the mean. And also, we uh, we you need to be uh, mindful here that um, uh, if we are if we if we have a sample, then what we are calculating is the sample mean. Uh, but if we have the looking at the entire population what we are uh, then estimating is a population mean. So we just need to be mindful of this so that we can distinguish. Uh, in, in this case, for instance, if we are talking about, if I want to talk about the weight uh, of, of, of Zambians, the average weight of Zambians. So if I just get a few Zambians, I wear them, and then I divide by the number of people I've weighed, what I'm getting is a sample mean. But for a population mean, you know, then I have to weigh almost every Zambian for me to get the average weight. So this is what I have to be talking about uh, to estimate the mean. So you have the observations. Uh, let's, let us assume that this is the, the average score uh, 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 of students uh, in, a, in a test. Uh, so the first student scored six, the other one 11, the other one seven, uh, that eight, uh, another one eight, nine, and 10. So we want to uh, estimate the mean score, for instance. So how do we get the mean score? The mean score is we add the, this uh, uh, eight observations, the eight observations. Yeah, one, two, th one, two, three, four, five, six, there are seven observations. So we add these seven observations, and then uh, uh, we divide uh, them by the, you know, the sum of the, 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 the seven numbers. And so we get 8.4 as a mean grade uh, that was obtained. So this is the measure of central tendency. Uh, in other words, it's the most likely mark that a student can ob observe. So, um, uh, and then the other uh, uh, parameter that is used for measuring central tendency is the median. The, so med the median of a set of data is a value that divides uh, the bottom 50 of the data from the top 50 uh, of the data. So it is a value, uh, when you arrange uh, numbers in order, it will separate them into equal uh, parts. So uh, when you arrange the numbers in, in numerical order, uh, so this median uh, falls in the, in the middle uh, of, of the data set and separates them into two halves. So when you want to estimate the median, this is how you go about it. You first arrange the data in order. Uh, 
and you may arrange them either in ascending order or descending order. It does not matter, but of course it, it, it is more in, in logically, you know, you, you intuitively we tend to arrange them into ascending order. Then of course you have to look up the end, you have to know how many are they. Uh, after you have arranged them in order, how many are they? So you, you, can, you count how many they are. Then determine the observations in the middle of the array. It's determine the observation. Which number is in the middle? Uh, when n is even, the median uh, is the mean of the two values closest to uh, the middle of the ordered list. So we are saying that, for instance, uh, this statement means that uh, uh, if, you have, if you have the numbers that you have, then you arrange them in order, and then you count them. Uh, when, when you count them, you find that they are eight, which means they are is even. So what we are saying here is that uh, to find the, the number that separates the two, uh, the two, the two uh, halves, uh, you find it uh, between the fourth and the fifth number, uh, the fourth and the fifth observation in that uh, array that you have arranged. So what you have, you have to do then, you divide the number in the fourth position. I mean, you add the number on the fourth position, and you add the number uh, in the fifth position, and then you, you, you divide by two. Uh, that's what, that will give you the middle or the median of that particular data set. Remember that I'm talking about uh, observation with eight numbers. That's why I'm talking about uh, taking the number on the fourth and the fifth position. If it was, say for instance, the number was uneven. If you have the number, you have nine numbers. That is, it makes life easier because when you have nine numbers, the middle is the one number which is in the fifth position because the one in the fifth position will separate uh, four numbers uh, on the left and four numbers on the right. Uh, so for uneven numbers, it's easy to uh, estimate them in without really uh, adding the two central numbers. So I said this already, if the number of the observation is odd, the median is the number in the middle of the order list. Uh, so normally there is no widely used symbol for the median, like the way it's from the mean. So normally occasionally the, the value x is used to you know, represent the, the median. So this is an exercise. Uh, I want you to, uh, to work on this and then calculate uh, uh, the mean and also the median. Estimate the mean and also estimate the median. This is an exercise for you. Oh. Can you do it now? Or oh, let me make it easy. I give you it as an example. So the two values closest to the middle, we are estimating the median. If you, if you look at this, uh, the two values that is closest to the middle uh, uh, is, according to this arrangement, is, uh, is 39. 38 and 40. So the median, because the number of this is even, the median is the mean of these two values. So if you counted this number, if you're able to count them, uh, if you're able to count them, you'll see that uh, uh, the, the numbers, they are even. Uh, and so you, you, you go out and find the two middle numbers, and then you add them, and then determine the, the median. So for small order data sets, uh, we can easily scan and see, uh, find the number or find the middle location. So you know, like what I said, uh, if we have, for instance, um, uh, eight observations, uh, it's easy uh, because the data set is small. So you can easily scan and find which ones are the middle uh, numbers once they are arranged in order. Uh, same as if they are nine, you can easily arrange them and find. But if you have got, say, for instance, uh, uh, 69 observations. Uh, it is difficult, you know, uh, at a glance to easily find the middle number. So what we do is that uh, uh, once, you've, once you have ordered the numbers, once you have ordered the number, then if there are 69, uh, of course, uh, uh, for order number in the position in the middle, so the number that is in the middle will fall into that. So if there are 69, uh, 
observations. Then this, we, all we do is that uh, once the ordered is 69, we add one, we divide by two, we have uh, 68. So the number, the middle, the median, will be the number that is in the, uh, in the 30, 34th position. So that will be the, 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 the median. So this is uh, a, a easier way to find which one is, is, is the middle number if you have a bigger uh, data set which you can not easily scan through. So here is an, a, an example. Uh, we have uh, an evening number. We have got uh, uh, 99 observations. So we want to find the median. So we arrange the number in order. And then we, after we do that, then we say 99 plus 1 divided by 2. Uh, it gives us 100. So uh, uh, 100 divided by 2, that is 50. So the median is the number which is in the uh, 50th uh, 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 position. So if the number, uh, if the number is uh, even like if we have 100 observations, so then the number, the, mid, the, the middle number, if the n is 50, then what we say, what we do is that you add one and divide by, uh, by uh, divide by two, then you get 50.5. In other words, uh, the middle number lies between uh, the 50th position and the 51th position. So that's the way we determine which one is uh, uh, the, uh, the median. So the other uh, measure of central tendency is the mode. The mode is the value in the data set that occurs most frequently. Uh, if no such value exists, uh, we say that the data has no mode. So assuming that you are, uh, you are measuring the height of people, and then uh, uh, you collect a, a number of them. Let's say you, 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 you measure 100 persons. And then uh, the mode is the height that you, know, you find that majority of the persons have. So which one is the, is the mostly observed uh, height? And that is the mode. And in case that you find that people normally have, uh, have got almost similar height, then in that case, there will be no mode. Yeah. If, if there's no number which is not occurring more frequently, then it, it, it says it has no more. Sometimes you may find there could be, in a data set, you may find one or two, or maybe two uh, numbers occur frequently. If there are two, then it is called bimodal. If there are two uh, uh, data sets that uh, occur more frequently, then it becomes uh, a, a trimodal uh, 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 type of uh, distribution. In other words, a trimodal distribution, if you are drawing a histogram, it's a histogram which will have three peaks. Uh, a, bi, a bimodal histogram, uh, if a, a distribution has a bimodal distribution, that particular histogram will have uh, uh, two uh, peaks. So uh, if you look at this data set, uh, we want to find the most uh, uh, frequent occurring number. Uh, that would be a mode. So if you look at this data set, 62 appears three times more than any other uh, a value. So in this case, 62 is the mode. It's the most frequently observed uh, number. Let us now look at the uh, dispersion, the measure of dispersion. So far we have discussed the measure of central tendency, how we can estimate the most likely value, uh, the most likely value. Uh, and the, we have said that the most likely value is estimated using the mean, uh, the median, and the mode. How about the dispersion? Because the population data set normally is described by these two parameters. We want to know the most, uh, 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 the most likely value, but also how this data set is spread. How, 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 what is the variability? How different are the numbers within this particular uh, distribution? So we use the the, the, the measure of dispersion. So that's what we're going to review. And for measuring dispersion, uh, we have got uh, uh, three uh, uh, parameters that are used to measure dispersion. And these are the range, uh, the variance, and the standard deviation. These are the common ones used. Of course, you, others you can use uh, percentile uh, range and the, oh, and the other, 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 other means like the confidence interval, but normally we use this as uh, the common me measures of uh, dispersion, the range, the variance, and the, 
the standard deviation. So the range, uh, the simplest measure is the simplest measure of uh, dispersion in a data set. So if, say, for instance, as I continue using the, the, the height of human beings as an example, uh, if we, we, we record the height and then we, 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 we arrange them in, in, in order, let's say in increasing order, so then we have the shortest person and the tallest person, assuming that the, the, the shortest person is about maybe uh, one meter, and the tallest person is uh, maybe uh, 1.8 meter. So to get the range is we subtract the height of a shortest person from the height of a, the tallest person, so we have the, the range. So that will give us a range. So the range will be from that particular smallest person to the, to the tallest person. That will be the range. So if you look at this uh, data set, uh, so if we are to find the range, it's clear here that uh, uh, this data set, the range is, is from 19 to 58. So you just pick, if, it, if this were, say for instance, let me talk about if, the, if it was a dairy milk yield. If it was dairy milk yield per, at a farm, uh, per animal. So what's a, what's a dairy, uh, what is the range uh, in terms of milk yield per, per animal? Uh, you saw the range uh, will be from 19 to uh, uh, 58. So this gives us an idea of variability, you know, which means there are, there, are, there are different possible values in between 19 and, uh, and 58. It just is, it gives you an idea of how dispersed uh, this is. Assuming that uh, uh, the, the, <clears throat> the lowest uh, yielding animal was 50, and the highest was uh, 58. Then the range will be 50 to 58. So with that, it gives you the idea that there isn't, there isn't much uh, variability among the, animal, in, among the animals in terms of milk yield. So the range has got, uh, it's an easy uh, uh, method or uh, way of you know, having an idea or about uh, uh, the variability in the data set. So this is the way you, you go about uh, estimating the range. Uh, normally you can estimate or just state it uh, in this format here, that the range is, uh, in this case, uh, it ranges from 14 to, uh, 14 to, to 28. Uh, people uh, normally uh, present this differently. Uh, you may just uh, state the actual values. You can say the range is, uh, uh, 14 to 28, or you can subtract there and say the range is 14. Yeah. The other measure of central tendency, uh, I mean, of uh, dispersion, is the, the 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 standard deviation. So the standard deviation requires you first to find the mean. So when you are estimating the standard deviation, you have to calculate the mean. Uh, then this the mean is subtracted from each data point. So when you are calculating the mean, uh, the standard deviation, you have to calculate, estimate the mean. Once you estimate the mean, then you subtract the mean from each of the data points. Let's assume that I've got a, uh, a data set with, uh, let's say, just four, four figures. I have got 10, 20, uh, 30, and 40. And the mean, let's say, uh, in that particular is, is 20. So what I'll do then, I'll subtract 20 from each of these uh, observations. And then once I've subtracted each of these, I square them. I square the, the, the differences. And then once I've squared the differences, I divide this by the total number of observations, which are four in this case, minus one. So what I get in this case is a standard deviation. It gives me the idea of how this space data is. Remember that we are subtracting uh, the, the mean from what, from each observation. So we are, in other words, trying to get uh, how far each of these observations is away from the central tendency. And then with that dotted distance, we do what uh, we get an idea of how, you know, variability is in the, the, in the data set. You see that uh, if, if, the, if the data points are too far from the mean, 
then we are likely to have you know, a, a, a bigger standard deviation. If the data points are close to the mean, then you know, we are likely to have a smaller standard deviation. So it gives us how displaced the figures, uh, the observations are from the, the mean. So the process of estimating the, uh, the standard deviation. So first you have to calculate the mean of your data set. And you know how to calculate the mean of this data set. You add all the observations and then divide by the total sum of the number of, uh, in the, of observation in that particular data set. Then you subtract the mean from each of the data values and list the differences. So you subtract each of the means uh, of the, uh, each of, the mean from each of the data values and subtract the differences. Then square the differences uh, from, the, uh, from step uh, B above and list the, the squares. Then you add the squares from the previous step together. So you add all the squares, then subtract one from the total number of values you started with. So if you started with 10 values, you subtract one, and you know, you, it comes to, to nine. And then divide the sum or, uh, from step D uh, by, the, by, the, by the number uh, from step uh, E. In this case, I gave an example of, 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 of nine, uh, because you started with 10, subtract one, then you, you divide by nine. Then take the square root of the number of the previous, uh, uh, from the previous step. So this gives you the standard deviation. So this is just uh, uh, an example or worked out example. Uh, suppose you have a data set with observations or data set samples, one, two, two, four, six. So the first thing to work out the standard deviation in this case, what we do is we sum up the numbers. Uh, the, the, the five observations, we sum them up. Then we divide this by, by five and then we get uh, uh, three. And so three is our number, our, our mean. So then what we do is we subtract these three from each of the observations. So from each of the observations we have, we subtract three. And what we get, uh, you know, these are the, the differences. Then the next step is now to do what? Uh, is to uh, square these differences. So we square the differences that we get. After we have squared the differences, uh, then we do what? We sum up them up. We add them up. Uh, you square the differences, then you add the squared differences. So after you, 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 you add the squared differences, what you get in this case is 16. And then uh, once you get 16, then the, the, step, the next step is that you, you, you estimate, you have the number of uh, observation you started with. In this case, we started with five observations. So we subtract one and get four. And so the next step then is that we divide the 16 that we got by four and, uh, from the previous step. And once we got this figure, then we find the square root. And the square root that we get is the standard deviation. So find time to work through uh, this example, yeah, so that you, you understand how this is done. So uh, uh, I've given you this is just uh, an example of you know uh, how how best to do it. So if you tabulate it, uh, it's better it's, it's better done than you know putting it the way I'd add. So I've I've just put it in this format so that it's easier to understand and get well organized. Uh, let us say that uh, we want to find the variance now. We, in this case, we are now interested in the variance. We've talked about the standard deviation. Uh, we want to estimate the variance uh, and the standard deviation of, uh, of the age among five close friends. Uh, the age uh, of your friends uh, as, 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 as presented here. You want to know, for instance, what is the uh, standard deviation or the variance or the standard deviation of uh, the of, of of among your friends. So suppose you uh, uh, you have five friends and then you are 25. Your next friend is 26. Another one 27. Another one 30. Another one 32. So you, you are interested in knowing what uh, uh, what is the range? You know, is, is do we have a high big dispersion or are we close? 
uh, 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 our, our, our age closely related, or you know, is there variability? We have maybe two old people and two young people, so you want to find the dispersion in, in that, in that in, in, among your friends. So the first thing you do is to do what to, uh, of course, uh, calculate the mean, estimate the mean. Once you estimate the mean, then you, uh, among your friends, you find that uh, on average, uh, your, your group is about 28, so that is the most likely number. And then what you do then, you subtract 28 from each of the ages of your friends to get, you know, the differences. Once you have done that, then you, you square the differences. Uh, and once you square the differences, you have five, and then you, so you, 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 you divide by five uh, minus one. And you get um, uh, 40, 40, uh, 43. Uh, 43, let me check if this is... Uh, because here I may have uh, uh, swapped things instead of 43, I write 30, 33. So this is, should be 43. And then you divide this, uh, you divide this, and then you get uh, 8.5. And so 8.5 becomes your what? Your, your variance. So the variance uh, is, a squared va is a squared value of the standard deviation. Uh, you remember that when we are getting standard deviation, what we do is that we, we find a square root uh, uh, of the number that we get. So the number that we get, before we determine the square root, that's the variance. And once we have gotten this, the, the square root of the variance, is the standard uh, deviation. So the standard deviation is the square root of the, of the variance. So in this case, the, standard, the, the variance is 8.5, and the standard deviation will be the, the the 2.9, which is the square root of that. Just take care of this, I uh, think I, I, I mixed up uh, in the numbers 43 and 32 uh, to get this. Uh, if you look at this, this is 34, so it's 34. So this number 43 is wrong, so it should be 34. 34 is correct. So that's what you use to compute here, is 34. So, uh, what have we been learning? We have been learning that uh, uh, a population normally is uh, described by two uh, parameters. That is the measure of central tendency and dispersion. So if you have a, a population of data, this population of data will be described uh, or will be characterized by these two parameters, the measure of central tendency and dispersion. And there are three uh, 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 parameters that are used to estimate the, uh, the central tendency. So you have the mean, uh, the median, and the mode. So this, you can use the mean, you can use the median or the mode to describe the central tendency. And when it comes to dispersion, uh, we use the range or the variance or standard deviation to uh, describe uh, dispersion in this data set. So thank you for listening.